Hello everybody, I'm here with Hippo Gats and he is going to be telling us about the indicator quality analysis that he's been doing. So basically in SQX, when we do a run, uh, SQX just grabs an indicator and it slots it together with other indicators to create millions of systems an hour that we then are mining to find good ones with. But one of the problems is we don't know which indicators SQX uses a lot and which ones that it does use, which ones end up being performing very well and go on to sort of hold out and passing our robustness tests. So what um, the question we wanted to know or the answer to the question we wanted to know was which indicators should we be keeping in SQX and which ones should we chuck out? Because the less indicators that we can have in SQX, the more likely they will be to be found when we're doing the mining. So I'll hand it over to Gaz now, and he will explain uh, what it is that he's done and how he's done it. He's written it in Python um, and how he's plugged it into SQX and some of the initial results that have been found. So this is quite a small run. This has been of about 100,000 systems, maybe. Oh no, this is 2,400. Yeah, 2,004,000. We might have to start that again. <laughs> Can't remember. What is that number? 204,000. That's it. My bad. Sorry, mate. <laughs> You're right. Keep going. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Dude, let's go so, for it. So it's about 200,000 systems. Yeah, I'm the numbers guy, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so this is uh, 204,000 systems. And what we've looked at is the uh, number of passes, which is just, has it been present in a profitable system versus the number of fails, the unprofitable systems. Uh, and this is when the system is looking at unseen data. We have. Um, so this is this is out of sample, or is this holdout? This would be holdout. This would be holdout at this point. Yeah. So um, the the systems that we've got uh, have already made it through a first bout of out of sample data. They've shown that they've been able to hold it together once, but then we test them again just to make sure that they weren't lying. And turns out that quite a lot of them were because um, as we can see, uh, some indicators uh, don't fare too well. So what's going on here? We have the times that it's been in a past system, the times that it's been in a failed system, the kind of percentage of that. So past divided by past plus failed, and then the number of instances that that indicator has been seen. All right, so if we look at, say, for example, um, the ADX that's just there. So when in, out of the 200,000 odd systems, it made it through, or made it to the holdout test 828 times. Yeah. And then when it got run through the holdout test, it was profitable 600 times yeah, and unprofitable 228 times. Yeah. And so that so, means that 72% of the time that it made it to the holdout, it made a profit. Exactly. Yeah. And we're inconclusive about whether making the universe super tiny um, to the real top performers is too small and leads to overfitting yet to be 100% on that. But what we're looking at is how we can get rid of the really bad ones first. Yeah. And the other thing as well that people just looking at this um, graph as we have it here at the moment, this is a very alpha stage and a very quick run. Um, and when we're saying here that something passed, it literally only has to make $1 in holdout. So this is very much a, a testing of a concept rather than any figures that you should be making trading decisions on. Yeah. Um, what we want to show here is that 
when SQX does run, the Gaz has made a program in Python that will take all the results of that run, tally up success and failures of index uh, of indicators, and will give us a report. So we're hoping that this will then enable us to identify the poor performing and the the very low selected indicators, um, because if an indicator isn't getting selected even in the training data, then it's going to be pretty hopeless because training data, you're going to have your best performance in. So you're going to have your, the systems that look the prettiest in your in-sample training data. So if an indicator isn't getting picked at all, even in training data, then it's probably not a particularly good indicator. And then from there and it, just because an indicator is getting picked lots in its in sample data so it looks pretty and it makes good in sample data we also need to know that it it continues to perform in out of sample and holdout data so basically is the indicator robust as well so again to reiterate the statistics you're seeing here are pretty much worthless. The point of them being is that we now have the ability to do these counts and to, f to find out which indicators are being selected and which indicators are being proven to be robust. Do you think that's a pretty fair summary of what, what you've done there, Gaz? Yeah, I'd say that's, that's basically what we're doing there. Uh, the thing to, uh, so the benefit of what we've done with these systems is that they've been completely random, randomly generated. So hopefully we won't have any of the genetic skew where SQX actually decides and like hammers down on an indicator uh, more than any others. Um, so hopefully this is a little bit more representative of the indicators ability itself but like i said these these sample sizes are pretty small as well so you uh, you wouldn't base like you wouldn't base uh an entire yeah, so don't make your own trading trading yeah. uh, decisions based on what you're seeing on the screen here yeah and and the other good thing as well that this will we'll, we will be able to implement this on all our training runs across all our computers uh so as we're doing very, very large numbers in actual development runs, uh, we'll be able to see the aggregate result of all these and be able to um, take out the, the indicators that are just proving to be wasting um, processing power. So anything else to add? Um, I think that's pretty much it. We just wanted to show off our our cool bit of programming that um gaz and pot have been up to um in our next run of development yeah excellent well until our next video which we hope or i will make sure is quicker than this last one it'll be coming up in the next couple of days uh we'll see you all again if this sort of stuff interests you click the subscribe button so that um when we post the next video, it pops up on your feed. Um, otherwise, you can also join us in our Discord channel. So if you go to our website, Tiptoe Hippo, there's a link to our Discord on there. So feel free to join us on that and ask us some questions because if you ask us a good question, we we'll very well might make a video up answering it. So until next time, it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from Gaz. Have a good one. See you, everyone.